مرحبا واهلا وسهلا بكم. Hello and welcome to another lesson in modern standard Arabic conversation at an intermediate level. This topic is about the summer holiday, الاجازة الصيفية, and speaking about the different activities and things that you would do when you're on vacation or on holiday, as well as discussing an important grammar topic which is making exclamatory sentences or making exclamations in Arabic. First listen to the conversation in Arabic and then I will be explaining word for word and providing you with a chance to practice at the end. يلتقي صديقان صدفة في المركز التجاري وذلك بعد انتهاء الإجازة الصيفية سامي يا لها من صدفة كيف حالك وكيف كانت إجازتك الصيفية أهلا أهلا جميل كانت إجازة ممتعة بالفعل سافرنا إلى سويسرا وقمنا بالتخييم في انترلاكن وهي منطقة جبلية مشهورة تقع في وسط سويسرا بين بحيرة تيثون وبرينز وتتميز بمناظر طبيعية خلابة وجبال شاهقة وبحيرات جميلة كم أنت محظوظ أما أنا فقضيت الإجازة هنا أخبرني عن كل ما قمت به أولا أين نزلت في أي فندق لم أنزل في فندق بل في شاليه صغير في المنطقة الجبلية اختيار جيد ومن رافقك من كان معك في الرحلة كنت مع مجموعة من أصدقائي المقربين كانت رحلة ممتعة بفضلهم وما النشاطات التي قمت بها قمت برحلات المشي وتسلق الصخور والصيد كما قمت بالتخييم في الغابة أيضا وكانت تجربة مثيرة وشوينا اللحم والخضروات وتسامرنا وسهرنا حتى الصباح وهل أخذت الصور؟ نعم التقطت الكثير من الصور الجميلة للمناظر الطبيعية انظر هذه هي الصور صور رائعة بالفعل هل استخدمت خريطة أم كان معك دليل سياحي؟ استخدمت خريطة للتجول في المنطقة وعدم الضلال في الطريق يبدو أنك خبير في هذا هل سبق أن قمت بهذا النوع من الرحلات؟ نعم سبق لي أن قمت بالتخييم في عدة مناطق قبل ذلك إنها إحدى هواياتي المفضلة ولماذا اخترت هذه الوجهة بالتحديد؟ اخترتها لأنها منطقة طبيعية خلابة هادئة وهواؤها منعش كما أنها تعتبر ملاذا هادئا بعيدا عن صخب المدينة يبدو أنك قضيت إجازة رائعة آمل أن تكون الإجازات المقبلة أيضا مليئة بالمغامرات والمتعة لا بد أن تصحبني معك على رأسي يا جميل طلباتك أوامر Explanation الشرح In this part I'm going to go through the story reading slowly bit by bit and explaining everything Let's begin first by quite a few terms in Arabic that would mean a vacation or a break and the difference between them So as you know, الإجازة الصيفية, the title, means the summer holiday. So for uh, a recess or like a break that you would have, for example, at school in between classes, we would call it فرصة. فرصة. فرصة also means a chance or an opportunity uh, as well. So we would call that فرصة. In addition, استراحة. استراحة is a break. And you might know also the noun raha means relaxation or leisure. 
So hence, when we say fursa or istiraha, that means a, a recess or a break, typically at school or it could be at work as well. Uh, when we are referring to like um, holiday, leave, vacation, we've got two uh, terms, ijaza and otla. So what uh, basically uh, ijaza could mean a, a vacation like al ijaza to saifiya, the summer holiday, or it could also mean when you're on leave from work or uh, school. Because we're going to look soon at the verb that it comes from. It comes from the verb ajaza to permit or to give someone literally a, a permission or an excuse or something like that. Uh, utla could refer to a holiday or vacation or even like a day off, uh, like the weekend. Utla to nihaya to spur, the weekend or the holiday of the end of the week, literally. So quite a few terms to be mindful of. Fursa and istiraha mean like a short recess or a break. Uh, ijaza and uh, utla could refer to a holiday or a vacation. Typically, ijaza is referring to when you're on leave or holiday from uh, school or work. In the broadest sense, we can say fursa as well could also mean vacation or uh, holiday because it, it also means a, an opportunity or a chance probably to relax. But let's narrow it down to uh, two meanings. Short break during the work day or the school day, we can say fursa or istiraha. The ijaza is leave from work or school, like summer holiday, so on. Otla means holiday or vacation. Al-ijaza to saifiya, that, that was the title, the summer holiday, and it comes from the verb ajaza. Ajaza means to approve something, to uh, endorse, to sanction, to let legitimate. So hence, you taking permission when you're going on leave. You're taking ijaza. So you're taking permission or license. In that sense, you have, for example, um, ijaza to qiyada driving license so license to drive ijaza to iftira patent or license for invention literally um you could also use that for holiday as we mentioned from work or school you could you could also uh, look at the following terms ijaza to hajj hajj leave ijaza to maradiya sick leave or leave for uh, sickness ijaza to saif summer vacation al ijaza to jami'iya that means bachelor's degree that is your license or now you can practice what uh, you've been studying literally so it's important to uh, understand uh, the root of the word or the verb that the noun uh, comes from hence I always stress why it's important to uh, learn how to look up words in an Arabic dictionary because it tells you all those details. So uh, al-furas al madrasiya school vacations, we said that fursa could mean a small recess or break or it could mean a chance or opportunity to relax. So when we say al-furas al madrasiya school vacations, uh, and I've given you an example here of when we use fursa as in a chance or an opportunity, we have a common saying that in Arabic, istaghalla al-fursa, literally he sees the opportunity to do something. Aw in al-fursa, this is a very common saying, so just wanted to squeeze that in here. And if we look at utla, a noun, uh, from that same root, we have the verb attala, yu'attilu, uh, to take a vacation. Attala aw yu'attilu. Ta'til is the gerund, mu'attil, that's very common in everyday spoken uh, Arabic. For example, I would say if I'm on, uh, let's say, school holidays in the summertime now, I would say, ana mu'attila. That means I'm on leave or I'm on vacation. I'm, I've got time off. We use the active participle a lot, especially in spoken Arabic. And something that is mu'attal is broken. For example, التلفاز uh, معطل is broken. Our سيارة معطلة it's broken. It's not working. So basically, something is not working or is off. عطلة رسمية an official uh, holiday. 
something that is rasmi is official, rasmi. Al-utlatu al-saythiyya, the summer holiday. Utlatu, nihayat al-usboor, the uh, vacation literally, or the holiday of the end of the week, which is the weekend in English. Utlatu, nihayat al-usboor. And we mentioned al-furas al-madrasiyya, and istaghalla al-fursa to seize the opportunity as well. So fursa could mean a small recess or a break. It could mean an opportunity or a chance. And we could also refer to like a break from school in the broader sense of like a holiday or vacation from school as well. Al-fursa al-madrasiyya and the singular in the plural al-furas al-madrasiyya. Let's begin by scene one, al mashhad al awwal the first scene. Yaltaqi sadiqani sutfatan fil markaz tijari Two friends meet, sadiqan, the dual of sadiq, they meet, yaltaqi. Sutfatan uh, means they meet by chance. That's what we call sutfa, by chance. Markaz uh, tijari means a shopping uh, center, literally, or a, like, a business center. Tijara means trading or business. Markaz is the center of something. Hence, al markaz al tijari, literally the shopping mall or the, or the business center. And that's after finishing, literally, we're using here a noun, the noun, intiha al ijazat al saifiya of the summer holiday. Let's look at the verb il taqa. Il taqa yal taqi. And we commonly use it with the preposition B. And I'll show you in a few seconds. And the gerund is iltiqa. So iltaqa shakhsani, two people met. Iltaqa shakhsun bi shakhsin, someone met literally with someone else. In English, you don't really need to say someone met. You say someone met someone else. You don't really need any prepositions or conjunctions, but in Arabic, when you want to say someone met someone, you have to use the preposition be. Iltaqa shakhsun bi shakhsin ma. Someone met someone else. Or two people met, iltaqa shakhsan. As in here. Let's look at the other verb here. Intaha, verb to end or finish. Intaha yantahi. And we can use it with preposition min. And the gerund is intiha. Intaha shay. Something has finished or ended. But when I say intaha min shay, is huwa intaha min shay, he finished literally from doing something. In English, you would say he finished doing something, but in Arabic, you have to use min. So intaha min shay. Intahaytu min al amal. I finished literally from work. So you have to add min. Intahaytu min al dirasa, and so on. So when you're using the verb form and you want to say you finish doing something, you have to use min. Sami, ya laha min sutfa. What a coincidence. Sutfa is a coincidence. And we're going to stop at this way of expression in a bit. Kayfa haluk, how are you? Wa kayfa kanat ijazatuka saifiya. And how was your summer holiday? Kanat, that means here kanat, referring to ijaza, which is a feminine noun, which typically ends with the round ta. But over here, the round ta changed to the open ta when it joined the possessive pronoun your. So we are conjugating for ijaza, which is here. Everything in Arabic is either he or she. So. Uh, one of the ways of slubu ta'ajub or how to express literally your uh, uh, marvel or exclamation at something in Arabic, there are different ways. A very common way, and I'm going to use the most common ones in standard Arabic. I'm not going to uh, refer to the archaic ones, the more than one. So we can say ma plus the pattern af'ala plus something. So how nice, how wonderful something is, how ugly something is. We're going to look at an example. Ma ajmal taqs. So how nice is the weather? Or what a nice weather. So the ma over here 
is not the question to ma, which means what mahada, what's this? This ma over here is uh, different. So it, we're using it for exclamation. There are different kinds of ma in Arabic language. So this ma is different. So ma ajmalat taqs. The verb always here takes a fatha uh, vowel. So ma ajmalat taqs. What a nice weather. So you can say how nice is the weather or what a nice weather in other words. I'm trying to pick the closest English explanation to make it easier. Uh, the word over here is always taking the pattern of af'al and we treat it as a verb. So jamil, beautiful, becomes ajmal. Sari'a, for example, uh, quick or fast, asra. Bati, slow, abta. Qabih, ugly, akbah. Hassan, nice. Ahsan, uh, nice or better. So you can actually uh, refer back to the lesson about comparatives and uh, superlatives in Arabic, which details how we derive uh, those uh, patterns in Arabic. I will leave the link for that as well in the description box and the comments. So how tall is the giraffe or what? A, a tall giraffe. So we can say ma atwal al zaraf. Tawil becomes atwal. Pattern afal. Ma atwal al zaraf. So basically, we're using ma plus the word that takes the pattern of afal, like ajman, akbah, arwa. Not all uh, uh, like nouns we can uh, derive them uh, as such. There are certain rules, and you can go back to that video to uh, have an idea. So then we uh, we have adat al taajjub ma fa'lu al taajjub kalima ala wazni afal, and then we have the object al mutaajjub min, and then we have the exclamation mark, which we call it alama al taajjub. We have a different style that we've seen in this uh, paragraph using the vocative particle ya. Plus lahu, or you can say laha, lahum, etc. You're using over here the uh, lam preposition, and then you're using over here a, a pronoun. And then you have also over here preposition min. Let's look at the example. So, ya lahu min taqs. What a weather. In English, um, sometimes you use the vocative particle o. Oh. Like, um, uh, oh, uh, my goodness, oh, God, you're calling on to something or to someone, you would use, oh, evocative particle. In that sense, in Arabic, we also have, yeah, when you're calling someone. And you might be familiar with that, obviously, at this stage. So, yeah, lahu min taks. What a weather. The pronoun over here goes back to the noun here. So, uh, who? goes back to taqs, which is huwa, which is uh, masculine. So everything is he or she. So for, for taqs, we have to use huwa because it's a masculine noun. Ya laha min sutfa. What a coincidence. Try to tell me why did we use laha and not lahu? What's your clue over here? Sutfa, a coincidence. Uh, is a feminine noun which ends with the round ta, which is a typical sign of feminine noun. So we're going to say ya laha, not ya lahu. Moving on to the next um, part of the conversation, ahlan, ahlan jamil. In Arabic, uh, typically and often we like to repeat certain phrases, you know, like ahlan, ahlan, welcome, welcome, you know, hello, welcome, welcome. كانت إجازة ممتعة بالفعل. It was uh, a, an enjoyable uh, holiday, indeed, بالفعل, indeed. سافرنا إلى سويسرا. We traveled to uh, Switzerland. وقمنا بالتخييم. And we camped. You can refer back to previous lessons where I, uh, in detail, explained about the verb قام يقوم ب. 
to carry out an action. So instead of saying, for example, khayyamna, using the verb khayyama directly, uh, uh, over here we said qumna bittakhim. We carried out the action of camping, literally. And that's a very common way of expression in modern standard Arabic. So instead of uh, saying kataptu, I wrote qumtu bil kitabati. I carried out the action of writing. So use the verb qama plus the preposition, preposition b plus the noun instead of uh, the verb. So qumna bil takhim. Uh, so let's look at the verb khayyama. Yukhayyimu takhim. Verb to camp or to pitch a tent. Um, or as well, it has a different meaning. So let's look over here at the examples. Khayyama fil ghaba. He camped in the forest or in the woods. And we can have this verb in another meaning or in another sense, which is to prevail. Darkness literally prevailed or covered uh, the village. So poverty literally took over people or was prevalent. So it could mean two things. Khayyama to literally camp or pitch a tent. So uh, you have that shelter or cover or it could mean that something is covering literally something else in a sense that it's prevalent. Khayyam al-Dhalam, Khayyam al faqr And you will come across that when you're reading uh, stories or in text in Arabic. قُمْنَا بِالتَّخْيِيمِ فِي إِنْتَرْلَكِنْ وَهِيَ مِنْتَقَةٌ جَبَلِيَّةٌ مَشْهُورَ So منطقة is an area, Jabaliya. Uh, this is an adjective uh, from the noun Jabal, which is mountain. So mountainous, when you add the ya of attribution, over here you're adding a uh, suffix which... Uh, uh, which uh, attributes this adjective to a certain noun. In this case, it's Jabal. And obviously, because Mintaqa is feminine, Jabaliya has to be feminine. Mashhura, famous as well, feminine adjective. Taqa'u fi, it's located in, we use this verb. We say uh, a certain place, Yaqa'u or Taqa'u fi, depending on the noun, because it's feminine over here, Hiya Taqa'u, and Mintaqa. Taqa'u fi wasati Suisra, in the middle. Wasat is middle. Wasati Suisra. And you know the Middle East, al-sharq al-awsat, the Middle East, comes from the same root. Bayna buhayratay, so between the two uh, uh, lakes. So buhayra is a lake. Buhayratani, two lakes. Over here, because this is in the genitive case, buhayratayn, and it's also, we have mudaf and mudaf ilay. The noon was omitted. So we don't say bayna buhayratayn, thun wa brains. We say bayna buhayratayn, thun wa brains. The noon was omitted due to idafa. Wa tatamayyazu bi manadira tabi'iyyatin khalaba. Tatamayyaz, something that when we say tatamayyaz, or yatamayyaz means it's uh, known, for something, or it's famous for something. It has certain characteristics. Tatamayazu be something. Tatamayazu be manadira tabi'iyya. It has very nice natural scenery. Mandar is a scene. Manadir in the plural, scenery. Tabi'iyya, natural, and it comes from the noun tabi'a. Tabi'a means nature. Something that is tabi'i is natural. For example, we can describe a female as having a natural beauty. لديها جمال طبيعي أو جمالها طبيعي. Her beauty is natural. And مناظر طبيعية. مناظر plural and it's non-human, so it takes a singular feminine adjective. So we say مناظر طبيعية. خلابة. خلابة means something like uh, very charming, captivating or scenic. And that's a very common adjective when describing nature in Arabic. Wajibal uh, shahiqa. And that's another adjective uh, that means something that is really tall or high. So we say something is bina'un shahiq. That's uh, a very tall building. Wabuhayratin jamila. And beautiful um, lakes. Moving on. Nutaba. We continue. 
كم أنت محظوظ How lucky are you? So earlier we said there are a few ways for أسلوب التعجب or how to excl exclaim about something or make an exclamation statement in um, Arabic. So we mentioned ما uh, أجمل something, how beautiful something is. ما أجمل الطقس. We also mentioned يا لها من صدفة what a coincidence أو يا له using the vocative particle يا yeah. we have another way as well which is using كم كم أنت محظوظ we know كم when we're asking about price for example كم السعر what's the price كم العدد what's the number or quantity so within this context we mean how lucky you are كم أنت محظوظ how lucky you are كم أنت وسيم How handsome you are If you're addressing a female كم أنت جميلة For example How beautiful you are And so on So obviously this uh, subject uh, pronoun Goes back to the person that you're speaking about And the adjective has to match Whether it's a male or female So كم أنت وسيم كم أنت جميلة. نتابع. We continue. أما أنا فقضيت الإجازة هنا. As for me, أما أنا, as for me, فقضيت, I spent the holiday, الإجازة هنا, here. أخبرني عن كل ما قمت به. Tell me about everything that you've done or literally carried out. The verb again, قام be plus something. Referring to everything that you've done. أولاً, firstly, أين نزلت? Where did you literally uh, stay? So you know the verb نزل typically means to come down or to get down or to fold or descend. نزل ينزل. And the gerund is نزول. But we also use it as in to stay or inhabit a certain place or occupy a certain place. So when we're typically asking about a hotel or speaking about a stay in a hotel, we use that uh, verb, نزل. So, أين نزلت في أي فندق? So this is your clue. In what hotel did you stay in? لم أنزل في فندق. I didn't stay in a hotel. بل في شاليه صغير. Rather in a small chalet. في المنطقة الجبلية. In the mountainous area or in the mountain area. Let's look at some examples over here. Nazala Sulam, he descended the stairs, or he went down the stairs. Nazala Sulam. Nazala al Matar, yani, Sakat al Matar, that means it rained, or literally rain fell down. Hua Nazala min al Jabal, he descended down from the top of the mountain. But we also said that Nazala could mean to stay, or inhabit, or occupy a certain place. Nazala fi funduk. He stayed in a hotel. And we have a noun, another noun for funduk, nuzul, which means something like a hotel, a lodge, or motel. And you might come across this when you're reading uh, stories or text in Arabic. And you might also know manzil uh, is a synonym of bait. It's somewhere where you stay. Goes back also to this verb, nazala, to stay in somewhere. Manzil is the name of a place. Typically, names of places start with a meme in Arabic. Like, for example, when you say madrasa, a school, a matam, a restaurant. Madrasa, the place where you study. Haythu uh, tadrus. Also, maktaba is the place where you write. And you might know the verb kataba, to write. Hence, menzil, where you stay, from the verb nazala as well. Once you can make those connections between the patterns, Arabic becomes really Easy. نزل ينزل مكانا أو ينزل في مكان. So you, you can use it either uh, without the preposition في or with the preposition في. You can also use it with the preposition ب. ينزل بمكان. So ينزل فندقا ينزل في فندق أو ينزل بفندق. Either or the three ways is correct. Moving on. نتابع اختيار جيد. That's a really good um, choice. اختيار is a choice from the verb اختارة, to choose or to pick. اختيار صائب. I'm giving you other ways of how he could have said it. صائب means سليم or صحيح, correct. 
اختيار موفق suitable or suitably chosen or successful and sometimes we say bit tawfiq when someone is um, like going on a trip or starting a new project we say bit tawfiq I'm wishing you success tawfiq is success اختيار حسن good choice as well ومن رافقك and who accompanied you from the verb رافق يرافق and the gerund is مرافق verb to accompany or to escort and you might know رفيق is a friend uh, هو رفيقي he is my friend أو هي رفيقتي she is my friend and that's a very common noun that we use in uh, everyday spoken Arabic in uh, standard Arabic we tend to pick more of صديق uh, but in everyday uh, life we prefer to say as well رفيق and مرافق can be used in the sense of a, a bodyguard or an companion. So murafiq could be someone's bodyguard. Man kana ma'aka fi rihla. Who was with you? Ma'aka, with you. Ma means with, the ka over here is you. So we have different ways of express, expressing possession in Arabic. We can uh, use uh, inda, for example, ana indi kitab, I have a book. And we can use ana ma'i kitab using ma. But the difference is with ma, you're implying that something is with you at the present time or accompanying you at the present time. So when I say hal ma'aka qalam, have you got a pen like right now with you? And so on. Hal ma'aka fakka, have you got change? So we can use that to imply that at the present time or when you're uh, for example, at an, uh, at an airport, and they're asking you how many people are accompanying you, or at a restaurant if you're booking a table. Kam shaksan maak? How many people are with you? That means right now. So over here, man kana maak? Who was with you, literally accompanying you at that uh, time? Fir rihla in the trip. Kuntu maa majmua. Majmua is a group. Majmua. Uh, and for example, Majmuatu Sharikat, a group of uh, companies. Majmuatun min al asdiqa, a group of friends. And, and in Arabic, we say al jamma. Jamma means plural. And uh, Salatul Jum'a is the uh, Friday prayer where people get together in a group. So uh, it's from the same root, the, the ja, the meem, and the ayn. Kuntu ma majmuatun min asdiqa, a group of my friends, al muqarrabin my close friends. So you might know that qareeb is an adjective that describes a place. Makan al-qareeb, a close uh, place. Uh, but aqriba, over here means relatives, aqriba. And muqarrab, someone who is close to you. And that's passive participle from the verb qarraba, to make something close. So sadiq uh, al-muqarrab, my close friend. But however, if I say someone is uh, uh, someone is uh, like I'm referring to relatives, I'm going to say aqriba aqribai, my relatives. Qaribi is my relative in the singular. Aqribai, my relatives in the plural. And muqarrab, someone who is close or someone that I've literally drawn close to me or made close to me as in a close friend. Huwa sadiqi al-muqarrab. So for... A relative, qareeb, qareebi, my relative, aqriba, relatives in the plural, aqribai, my relatives. But for someone who's close to me as in a friend, we use muqarrab, sadiq al-muqarrab, asdiqa al-muqarrabin, and so on. Nutaba, we continue. وَمَنْ نَشَاطَاتُ الَّتِي قُمْتَ بِهَا And what are the activities that you carried out, that you've done? Nashat an activity. Nashatat in the plural. Again, we're using verb kama. Kama yakumu bi. Lati anta kumta bi ha. The ha over here goes back to an nashatat. Try to think for a moment why we said bi ha. Although nashatat here is plural, non human. So it has to take over here a pronoun. The pronoun over here refers to an nashatat. The pronoun is singular feminine. 
and goes back to النشاطات. So anytime that we have a uh, plural non-human noun in Arabic, it will take a singular feminine adjective. And in this case, the pronoun when we're speaking in speech that we choose uh, goes back to النشاطات has to be singular feminine. Biha, we cannot say bihi or we cannot use a plural pronoun. So just be mindful of that. I could say marrahlat, what trips. التي قمت بها again الرحلات uh, even if I ask what books have you read ما الكتب التي قرأتها so again ha goes back to الكتب so we always uh, refer to non-human plurals using a singular feminine adjective or a uh, singular feminine pronoun in the course of speech قمت ب again the verb قام ب with the preposition ب قمت برحلات المشي walking trips from the verb مشى يمشي وتسلق الصخور and climbing rocks from the verb تسلق يتسلق to climb الصخور the plural of صخرة a rock or side and hunting or fishing so in Arabic side is not specific it could mean either or unless you say side uh, السمك that means catching fish, literally. So you're being specific. So when we say sayyad, a hunter or a fisherman, either or, unless you're very specific. Kama kumtu bitakhim, as well as I've uh, camped or did the action of camping. Instead of saying kama khayyamtu, uh, I've used kumtu bitakhim. Fil ghaba, I done. Wa kana tajribatan muthira. It was a really exciting. Something that is muthir is exciting uh, experience. Let's look at the verb. Jarraba yujarribu. To try or to test or examine something. You know, ikhtibar is an exam. And ikhtabara means to try or test something as well. That's a synonym. Tajruba is an experience. For example, jarraba haddahu, using the verb form. He tried his luck. Jarraba al-hatifa qabla shira'i. He tried the phone before buying it. The ha over here goes back to al hadith. Jarab al qamis, he tried the shirt. That means qasahu, he tried it on. Ala jismi, on his body, literally. So, kanat tajribatan muthira was an exciting experience. Wa shawayna al lahm, and we grilled meat, wal khudrawad, and vegetables. Wa tasamarna. The verb tasamara, yatasamaru, means to spend the night in conversation or chit-chat, typically evening or nighttime. And we have a very beautiful name in Arabic, which is Samir. Samir means a friend, sahib or sadiq, that you typically chit-chat with at night. وَسَهِرْنَا حَتَّى الصباح. And we stayed awake until the morning. From the verb sahira, to stay awake. And in everyday uh, Arabic, we say, أَيْنَ سَهِرْتَ Where did you... Spend the night out at literally. Did you go to a restaurant? إلى مطعم هل ذهبت إلى مطعم؟ أين 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 خرجت? Where did you go out? So أين سهرت? Where did you spend the night literally? As in what place have you been? So useful um, verbs that you can use in everyday speech, especially in terms of um, staying out, in terms of chit chatting at night, or in terms of trying something. Moving on, نتابع وهل أخذت الصور and have you taken pictures? نعم, التقطت الكثير من الصور. I've taken lots of pictures. الجميلة, beautiful pictures. للمناظر الطبيعية for uh, natural scenery. انظر, look. هذه هي الصور. These are the pictures. Again, هذه هي. So why did we use هي? Because uh, صور non-human in a plural. Same thing, هذه. Why did we use هذه? Because non-human uh, plural. Two ways of uh, saying to take a picture of someone. We can use the verb أخذ to take or التقط which means to catch or to grasp or pick up something, literally. So أخذ صورة uh, لي. To take a picture of something. أخذ صورة 
لي زوجته he took a picture of his wife be mindful to use لي to take a picture of something same thing with التقط صورة لي to take a picture of something التقط صورة لي زوجته he took a picture of his wife أو لمعلم سياحي for a touristic place معلم سياحي التقط صورة لمعلم سياحي أو لمكان سياحي نتابع we move on صور رائعة بالفعل indeed بالفعل so we're repeating بالفعل indeed أو حقا indeed you can use those adverbs هل استخدمت خريطة did you use a map from the verb استخدم يستخدم to use something and you might have come across اسم المستخدم username in Arabic that's from the same verb أم كان معك دليل سياحي or did you have a tour guide دليل is a guide دليل سياحي دليل الهاتف the, the phone guide guides as well the book that you open with the, all the phone numbers استخدمت خريطة للتجول so I used a map for تجول means literally for roaming or strolling or walking in a leisurely manner تجول يتجول تجول is the gerund that means انتقل من مكان إلى آخر so استخدمت خريطة للتجول في المنطقة وعدم الضلال في الطريق to roam or to walk around in the area and عدم means something not Adam is a lack of something. So, and for the purpose of not getting lost, dalal means being lost. It's a noun. بالطريق. ضل يضل ضلالا. So, dalal is the gerund. The uh, synonym of ضل to get lost is تاه. ضل الشخص. That means he got lost. ضل الشخص في الصحراء. He got lost in the desert. God forbid. لا سمح الله. أو ضل طريقه. He lost his way as well. تاه. He got lost. يبدو أنك خبير في هذا. بدأ يبدو. That means something seems like or looks like something. يبدو أنك. It seems that you are. أو يبدو أنك. Addressing a female, for example, depending on the context. هل سبق أن قمت بهذا النوع من الرحلات. Have you ever done or carried out such kind of trips? So if you want to ask someone, have they ever done something? هل سبق أن plus a verb in the past tense. هل سبق أن أكلت, uh, for example, الحمص. Have you ever ate hummus? هل سبق أن ركبت الدراجة. Have you ever uh, rode a bike, for example? So هل سبق أن Plus a verb in the past tense. Now I've had a question on the, on the, on uh, my uh, one of my previous videos, which I had a short video discussing how to say, "Have you ever done something?" And they said, "Can you actually use an with a past tense verb?" Yes, you can. <laughs> so yes, you can use an within this context with a past tense verb. Obviously, there is uh, no subjunctive case. So it just stays at it. It's, it's, the N over here is ineffective. In that sense, it doesn't change the, the case ending of the past tense verb like it does with the present tense verb. So هل سبق أن plus a past tense verb. Just as in English, you say, have you ever done something? Have you ever eaten something? So uh, with the past tense. نعم سبق لي أن. Again, with the past tense. أن قمت. So I, I've done something. سبق لي أن. أكلت الحمص. I've previously eaten hummus. For example. هل سبق نعم سبق لي أن قمت بالتخييم. I've previously carried out the action or done camping. أو سبق لي أن خيمت as well. I can use the verb form directly instead of قمت بالتخييم. I've done the action of something with a noun. I can replace it directly with a verb. في عدة مناطق in several locations or areas. قبل ذلك before that إنها إحدى هواياتي المفضلة it's one of my favorite hobbies إحدى is the feminine of أحد so because we have هوايات feminine noun ولماذا اخترت هذه الوجهة بالتحديد and why did you choose uh, 
this destination specifically or this location specifically. Wujha is someone's destination or where they're heading. اخترتها لأنها منطقة طبيعية خلابة because it's a natural and scenic or enchanting um, uh, lo- uh, beautiful natural location. So again, we're using the adjective خلاب which means something that is scenic. هادئة, calm وهواؤها منعش and it's uh, is refreshing, literally. كما أنها تعتبر over here in the passive, it's considered Maladan had and Baidan and Sahabil Medina. It's considered Maladan. Malad is a refuge or sanctuary, somewhere that takes you away from other stuff. So it's a calm refuge away from the clamor or the noise of the city. Sahab is clamor and noise. Muntas, Muntabe. يبدو أنك again it seems that يبدو أنك قضيت إجازة رائعة it seems that you've spent a, a, an amazing holiday or vacation آمل I hope أن تكون الإجازات المقبلة the coming holidays that the coming holidays will be أيضا also مليئة بالمغامرات والمتعة full of adventures مغامرات the plural of مغامرة والمتعة and enjoyment لا بد أن لا بد means there's no escape. لا بد no escape or no running away from something. لا بد أن تصحبني معك. You should, you must take me with you. And in literal translation, there's no escape from the fact that you should take me with you. Something like that. على رأسي يا جميل. In everyday Arabic, we have uh, phrases uh, that uh, depict um, courtesy. So when we say على رأسي or in uh, spoken Arabic, we say ala rasi. We uh, kind of do not pronounce the glottal stop. Ala rasi. Literally means on my head. <laughs> that means consider it done. Or like I'm going to do that with utmost pleasure. Ala rasi ya jamil. Talabatuka awamir. Your orders or your requests are orders. Talabat, the plural of talab. They are considered orders for me. So I'm going to do them immediately. That's another common phrase. طلباتك أوامر. So, لا بد أن تصحبني معك. Let's look at the verb over here. So, صحب يصحب to befriend or come along or accompany someone. And from that as well, we have the word صاحب, which means a friend. صاحب a friend in Arabic. So, لا بد أن تصحبني معك. You must take me uh, with you. Let's now uh, practice using the vocabulary and verbs that you've learned in this unit. Describe each picture in one sentence. So I'm going to show you a set of pictures. Pause the screen. Try to describe the picture in at least one sentence. Obviously, if you can do more, fair enough. Brilliant. The first picture. Pause the screen and think of what you can say. And I'll Try to give you example answers as well. هم يخيمون في الغابة. So they're camping in the forest. أو هم قاموا بالتخييم في الغابة. You can use the verb قام as well. هم يتسامرون أو يتحدثون مع بعض. They're uh, talking or chit-chatting to each other. We can use the verb تحدث مع to speak with someone or the verb تسامر as we said which means chit-chat in the evening or night time. The second picture. Pause the screen again and take your time because I'm going to move on to the answers. What can you say? Leave your answers in the comments box below. I'm not really... I'm not sure what kind of meat. Let's do that again. Or he eats the lamb or the the dajjal. So you can either use the verb straight away, or you can use the verb "kama" plus the preposition "be" plus the noun. So I've given you uh, both options over here. ماذا يفعل? What's he doing? صف الصورة. Describe the picture. 
ويلتقط الصور لمعلم سياحي. So he's uh, taking pictures or literally capturing pictures for a touristic uh, place or location. هو يأخذ الصور لمعلم سياحي. معلم سياحي means a touristic uh, location or place. ماذا يفعل؟ ما النشاط الذي يمارسه؟ What kind of activity is he doing؟ أو الذي يقوم به that he's carrying out. هو يمارس رياضة الصيد. So he's practicing or doing the sport of hunting. Literally, I'm using very literal translation. هو يمارس هواية الصيد. We can use هواية, hobby or رياضة, sport. ماذا يفعل؟ What's he doing? هو يمشي في الطبيعة أو هو يتجول في الطبيعة. So we can use the verb to roam or to hike يتجول. هو يمارس رياضة التجول. We can use the, the noun over here التجول. Roaming, hiking, so on. So in this picture we can see a map. يمكننا أن نرى خريطة. ماذا يفعل؟ What's he doing? هو يستخدم خريطة. He's using a map. هو ضل طريقة. He lost his way. So we can say several things about this uh, picture. هو يحتاج إلى خريطة. He needs a map. Do you remember the verb that said to meet someone or that described the action of two people meeting and saying hello to each other? هما التقيا. They met. أو هو التقى بصديقه هو التقى بصديقه أو هو التقى بزميله في العمل his colleague at work he met his colleague at work the next exercise try to match uh, the words in column A with the meaning in English in column B رافق أو صحبة تجربة تجول نشاطات خلابة التقى ب مغامرة مناظر طبيعية and we've got over here to walk leisurely natural scenery to accompany scenic or charming an adventure and experience activities and to meet pause the screen and take your time now uh, the final part I've got the English translation because I couldn't fit everything on the screen at the beginning so if you want to read the English translation, pause the screen and take your time uh, to read. وصلنا إلى النهاية. وشكرا لكم ولحسن المتابعة وإلى اللقاء